Welcome back to Calculus with Mr. Robeson. All right, we are looking at volumes today of revolutions, and we're going to be missing the middle section. And we're going to use what something that we call the washer method. The washer method with an extra R in the middle. It's it's like washers, but like an extra R in it. And the reason why we put the extra R is is two reasons. One, my calculus teacher had a horrible accent. I think it was like a New York accent when I was in high school, Miss Miss Hobart. And she used to say washer with an extra R in it. And I've taken to using that R. So what ends up happening is we have this large radius, which we're calling capital R, and then we're missing this kind of a hole in the middle. It's like a donut or what's called a washer when you use it like on a end of a screw or the end of a bolt. It's just a little, little metal piece that has a hole in the middle that looks something like this. All right, and what we end up doing is we add up all these tiny little washers or washers and they give us our volume from revolution. So we're gonna have some top curve and we're gonna have some bottom curve and we're really just squaring each and then subtracting. So we're doing the volume created by the outside one minus the volume created by the inside one. So in other words, we get the volume is pi, don't forget your pi, the integral from a to b of the large radius squared minus the little radius squared dx. Or again, we can go along the y-axis if we're stacking these washers up along the y-axis. This would be, looks like along, say, an x-axis. All right, so let's take a look at an example. And I think I have a picture here. There we go. Find the volume of the solid created by rotating the region bounded by y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared about the x-axis. So let's see. We do a little drawing here. Here's the x squared graph on the bottom. Here's the square root of x on the top. And we're going to rotate that around the x-axis. And we end up making this shape here, if you can picture that in your head. All right, so then the outside radius is going to be the top one here. So the top radius is going to be from the x-axis on up. And it's just going to be that. So this is my big R. The little radius, the one that we're going to subtract away, is this graph, the bottom one. And that's x squared. So we let our little r equal x squared. So what ends up happening is the volume is pi times the integral. And then we see where do they cross here? Where do they cross here? Well, they go from 0 to 1, x values, so it's from 0 to 1, of big R, which is the square root of x squared, minus little r, which is x squared, squared, dx. So this is actually not that bad of an integral. This is x minus x to the fourth. We can integrate that pretty, pretty straightforward. So we get pi x squared over 2 minus x to the fifth over 5. And we're going from 0 to 1. Plug in 1. So we get pi. We get 1 half minus 1 fifth minus pi times 0 minus 0. When we plug in 0, so that's all just 0. So we're getting 1 half minus a fifth. So let's see. That's 5 tenths. This is 2 tenths. So that's going to be 3 tenths. So they get 3 pi over 10 is our answer. All right, next up. Find the volume of the solid form by revolving the region bounded by the graphs. Let's see, do I have a picture here? Oh, I do have a picture. y equals 0, x equals 0, x equals 1, and y equals x squared plus 1. So here's my graph of y equals x squared plus 1. And we're going to revolve that around the y-axis. And let's see, x equals 1 is this line right here. So this is x equals 1. We've got x equals 0 is this line right here. And we've got y equals 0, which is basically our x-axis. And we're taking this region, and we're going to revolve it around here. So we're getting like another side of it over here. That's actually a pretty good drawing on my part. All right, so we're getting this inner radius here and an outer radius that doesn't change at all. It's just going to stay 1. So our outer radius here is 1. Our inner radius, it looks like it's just this x distance over. But that x distance is this function right here. So we need to solve for x here. So we get x equals, so we'd subtract 1, y minus 1, and then the square root. So the square root of y minus 1, all right? Because this is just the distance right here from the axis over. So if we just go along the x-axis a certain distance, that's just x. But that x 
is the x from this function right here. All right, so that's the distance over. And we're making these little washers, they're going up the y-axis. So that means we're gonna be using dy. So if we revolve around a y-axis, we're using dy. Or if we revolve around x equals a number, we're using dy. So we get that our volume is pi. All right, so now we get some, we actually, it's best to break this into two. The top one and the bottom one. The top one is we're going from one to two along the y-axis with our outer radius is one, so one squared. Our inner radius is this guy, square root of y minus one squared dy, plus this volume of the bottom half. And this bottom half, is just gonna be a cylinder. All right, so we don't have to do the dis, we don't have to do the dis method for this. We can if we want to, but we can just think of this as having radius r equals one. It has a height one. So the volume of this bottom part here is pi r squared h. So volume is pi times one squared times one. So that volume of the bottom half is just pi. Volume of the top half is the integral that we're doing over here. So this is going to be plus pi in the end. All right, so now let's try and do this guy. So if we simplify just that, we're going to get pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 minus, if we square this, we're getting y minus 1 dy. All right, and if we just distribute the minus sign here, 1 minus y plus 1. So we're going to get 2 minus y basically inside. So pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 minus y dy. If we integrate that, we've got pi times 2y minus y squared over 2 from 1 to 2. And we've got to plug both of them in. So we get pi times 2 times 2 is 4. 2 squared over 2 is 2. And then we've got pi times we plug in 1, we get 2 minus a half. So we're going to get, what is this, 2? 2 pi minus 2 pi plus a half pi. All right, so those two are going to cancel. So then we're getting that the top here is pi over 2. So we get pi over 2 plus the pi from the bottom, and that's going to be our answer. That one was tricky. I know. We'll, we'll do some more in class. Don't worry. All right, and we'll do some more on the next couple of slides here too. But that's it for this one.